and welcome back to D's Nerds. I'm Michelle and today we're going to be doing another unboxing, this time of the Once Upon a Book Club Bridgerton box. I'm really excited about this one. Okay, so this box was a special order. Um, I think they might still have some left, so you might be able to go pick one up. Um, they are kind of pricey, but you get um, some special edition hardcover Bridgerton books. You get some items that go along with the pages, so I'll show you when we get in there, but basically it will give you the name of the book and a page number, and when you reach that page and you read it, you go open that package so you can see what goes along with the page and what item you got. So I've actually read all of these already, so none of this is going to be a surprise to me as far as like what's in the book. So I'm just gonna go quickly and kind of look at the page and then open up the items. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So the first thing I see when I open this up is a little pack with some items in it to start with. So it looks like the front is a lady whistle down type of um, letter or newspaper, her little newspaper that would come out in the mornings. Um, inside we have um, an interview with Julia Quinn, information on how to make a mini croquet set. So there's a cute little tutorial there. And then in the back, there is a timeline, which is actually really helpful, of when the books all take place. So you can actually see how they're chronologically fit because there's some years in between some of them. I think some of them overlap a tad bit. So you can sort of see where they actually fit in there. And then we have a uh, Bridgerton photo challenge. So you are supposed to create this using everyday items and then post it on Instagram. So that's pretty fun. All right, next up we have an I burn for you print here, which is such a good, oh, the way that Simon delivers that in the show was something else I tell you. He grabbed her hand and pulled her body against his. I burn for you, he said, touching his lips to her ear. Oh, yeah, Bridgerton, yes. So yeah, it's got like the page. I don't know if you can see it very well, but like the page is actually behind it in white. So it's real faint, but that's a really cool print. I like that. Okay. So the last thing is a bookmark. And this is the, uh, once upon a book club, bringing books to life monthly Bridgerton box volume one. So they're going to do at least one more of these. There's supposed to be the first three books in this one, plus the items. So I assume that since there are eight books, there'll be at least one or two more boxes, depending on how they split them up but we'll see how this goes. So that's cool to always have a bookmark handy. And that was all that was in our little starter. So let's go ahead first and start looking at the books on top here. And it is beautiful. Look at this. <gasps> it looks like my Barnes and Noble ones. Like, I don't know if you can see those over here. I've got the like Barnes and Noble, kind of the leather bound classics and stuff. That's what this reminds me of. Um, it's not leather bound and it doesn't have like any, um, metallic anything on it, like any embossing, but it's really pretty. It is a nice hardcover. So we've got a picture here on the front of Simon and Daphne. It does say it's a limited edition of oh, 2021. Look at that. Very cool. And the back says, my dear Miss Bridgerton, he said, wiping his eyes. If you are the soul of kindness and amiability, then the world must be a very dangerous place. <laughs> That's such a good quote. Oh, and this one is signed, I believe. <gasps> yes, it is signed by Julia Quinn. So extremely cool. Um, I do have all of these. I actually did a video over the whole series, so you can go and look that up. Um, I'll have a card up here and we'll try to put that link down below as well if you don't, don't get it right now. But you can go see my review of all of the books plus a little um, kind of recap of some, some of the series comparison, kind of how I felt about it and all of that. So um, this is a very pretty one. I love the pink. I'm here for the pink. The second book is one of my favorite ones in the series. This is The Viscount Who Loved Me. Um, and we've got Kate and Anthony on the front. Oh, the Corgi. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, and then the back part of it says, I think the human heart must be stronger than we could ever imagine. So this is definitely one of my favorite ones. I love the cover. These pictures are so pretty. I'm not sure who painted these. I'll have to look and see if it says somewhere, but very pretty. I don't think any of the other ones are signed. But, um, yeah, I should have showed you like, just the inside of it, too. I mean, they, the pages are real nice and everything. Oh, what was this? Is this the artist or was that Julia Quinn? Oh, that's Julia Quinn. Okay, I just wanted to see. All right, and then last, book-wise, we have an offer from a gentleman. So I've got Benedict there. And I'm just completely blank. Is it Sophie? Yeah, Sophie. 
um, Benedict and Sophie there on the front. I'm looking forward. I'm really looking forward to the next season of Bridgerton just to get to see more of these characters up close. I know that next season is supposed to be Antony's story, and I'm really, really hoping that we don't have to wait all of those seasons to get all of the stories, but I mean, I guess more content, you know? Yeah, this one's very nice as well. And then on the back, it says it seemed that one day she was a stranger and the next was as, was as indispensable as air. Sorry, I was trying to read that backwards and failed for a second. Um, but yeah, I like this one. This is a pretty cover too. I really like the cover on this one. I feel like that house in the background totally looks like the uh, Downton Abbey house. Does anybody else get that vibe? <laughs> I don't know. That's just what it looks like to me. But I like the colors on this one. The purple, the kind of lavender and the navy. That's pretty. All right. So now we're on to the actual items. So just to kind of give you a little preview, let me find... Okay, like you'll get boxes or packages like this. So it says the Duke and I, page 402. And can we just talk about how nice the packaging is? I mean, like everything's in like legitimate like boxes and stuff. It's really pretty. So there's one for the Duke and I. You're supposed to get two or three items per book. So let me just take a second and sort them out and then I'll come back. So we're back. So I've got three items per book here. And so we're going to look at the books. Um, I've already read these. So if you don't want this spoiler, if this is a box you want to purchase, then this is probably the point you want to stop or skip to the end. And then if you want to see the items, I'm going to look at the books, read the little passages, and then go ahead and show you what the items are because I've already read all the books. So I'm just excited to see what's here. All right. So first up, we'll start with the Duke and I. And it looks like the first page number is... 120. So we'll go to page 120. And this does go for just these copies, I believe. I don't think the page numbers are the same if you, you know, are using another copy of the book. I would think so anyway. Oh, cute. They even tell you, like, open your gift. So, um, here, these are for you. For me, Violet's mouth fell open in surprise, and a strange little breathy sound escaped her lips. Are you certain? Because I... She looked over at Daphne and then Simon and looked back at her daughter. Are you certain? Absolutely. Violet blinked rapidly, and Daphne noticed that there were actually tears in her mother's eyes. No one ever gave her flowers, she realized, at least not since her father had died ten years earlier. Violet was such a mother, Daphne had forgotten that she was a woman as well. All right. So I'm guessing then that these are going to be some kind of flowers. So we'll look. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, so we do have some flowers. These are really pretty. I don't know what this ribbon says. I really wish I could tell. Um, but yeah, there's some really pretty fake tulips, but like those look pretty legit. Those look kind of realistic. I mean, I feel like I'm used to just like really cheapo looking silk flowers, but those are beautiful. Okay. I'm definitely going to like have to find a spot to put these on my bookshelf or maybe they'll like, replace my lavender over here when it goes. <laughs> so yeah, those are pretty. I like that. That's sweet. And you also have this little bag left from it. All right, our next page is this little box, and this is page 244. All right, here we are again. It says, open your gift. Oh, I'm going to back up just to that. Nestled in the box is a stunning band of white gold adorned with a large marquee cut emerald flanked on either side by a single perfect diamond. It was the most beautiful piece of jewelry Daphne had ever seen. Brilliant but elegant, obviously precious but not overly showy. So... I have to take the ribbon off. That's sad. I don't want to take the ribbon off. It's pretty. <laughs> oh, look, it's cute. It's a little ring. Okay, it's a pinky ring for me, but it is really cute. It's not exactly like the one in the book, but I mean, it's pretty. It'd be kind of crazy if they gave you one exactly like the book one, <laughs> but it is cute. It's nice and dainty. I like the dainty. Okay, so that's another cute thing here. I'm liking that I feel like the stuff I've gotten so far is something I can definitely either easily and plausibly display or I can um oh there's an okay I'm sorry pause there's elastic under this so you can actually put it back oh that's cute and the box is adorable okay I'm happy now I don't have to like ruin this that's cute okay but anyway as I was saying I like that the stuff I've gotten thus far I mean I've only got open two items but it's plausibly like displayable usable um, wearable in this case. So always a thumbs up for me. I hate getting useless junk in book boxes. So yeah, we're doing good so far. All right. The last one for the Duke and I is page 402. 
So let's check out page 402. Okay, and in a small elegantly furnished chamber, not so very far from Hastings' house, a woman sat at her desk with a quill and a pot of ink and pulled out a piece of paper. With a smile on her face, she set her quill to paper and wrote, Lady Dis Whistledown Society Papers, 19 December, 1817. Ah, gentle reader, this author is pleased to report. So I assume we're going to get some kind of stationery or something here. Um, but yeah, that was all, those are all the gifts for this. So let's take a look at this gift. Ooh. Okay. So we got like a fancy quill. And it's got... Oh, it's got, oh, it's got the quote on it. Like, that's actually what's printed here. Um, we've got a little ink pot. We've got some different calligraphy um, or some different, uh, what are those called? Nibs, I think. And then there's one already on here. Oh, that's so cute. And then the background's like, this is really nicely curated. Way to go, Once Upon a Book Club box. I've never got, I don't have it. I'd never heard of them before I heard this was coming out. So this is all new to me. Thus far, I'm very impressed with their quality and their choice of things because I totally either am going to A, display this or B, try to use it because I've never actually tried to use like a quill pen like this or any, you know, real calligraphy pens, except for maybe like one art, art project in elementary school when we tried it, I think, but that's pretty awesome. So definitely pumped to uh, have that and try it and it looks really pretty. So very nice. All right. So those were all three gifts for the Duke and I. So we have so far the flowers, the ring, and the quill, which means we are now on to the Viscount Who Loved Me gifts. So let's go ahead and look at those. We also got three of these as well. And it looks like the first one is on page 140. He watched as her chin trembled as her throat worked a convulsive swallow. And then abruptly she crouched down and scooped up the key. You will never marry my sister, she bowed her low intense voice sending chills to his very bone bones never and then with a decisive click of the lock she was gone okay so we're talking about a lock here i just love that they do this that's so cute like i mean if you were really reading these for the first time um that would be such a neat thing to do I, i've never had that experience i know that i've seen other boxes come out like that but it's just I've, i'm either usually not a fan of the books i do that with or i've already read them and so i feel like that kind of spoils it a little bit but this is still really neat. I mean, that's a cool concept and would be a really cool gift if you wanted to give these to somebody that you thought would love them and let them kind of have the whole experience. That'd be really fun too. All right. So anyway, let's see. We're talking about a lock. So I assume that's what we're going to look at. This is just a little pouch. It is heavy. It does feel kind of key-like. We have, oh, like an iron key with a fancy little piece of lace on it. So that's really cute. I mean, I don't know what I'll do with this. This is definitely just like a kind of a set it up and display kind of item, I guess, because I mean, obviously I can't use it and it would be too heavy to make a necklace out of. It's actually quite large. I don't know if you can tell like against my hand, but it is cool. So it looks like our next page is page 279. So let's go to 279. My Lord, she said politely, moving the tea a few inches farther in his direction. Anthony grasped the saucer, allowing for his glove fingers to brush against her bare ones. He kept his eyes on her face, noticing the faint pink stain of blush that touched her cheeks. For some reason, that pleased him. So they're having tea. He touched her cheek. I don't, he's got gloves on. I guess we'll see what this is. So page 279, we have a nice little box. Ooh, it's a teacup. Oh, there's a saucer in here too. Okay, hold up. So first of all, it says, ah, gentle re reader, this author is pleased to report. It's a nice, pretty light blue. And they've got some pretty flowers on the inside. That's so cute. I love teacups. I gotta see the saucer. Okay, so we've got a nice light blue saucer that matches with the gold around the edges. So there it is. That's so pretty. Another one that's really good to display, or actually, I mean, you can use this. You could totally use this if you wanted to be fancy. So I like that. That's pretty. All right, and then we've got one more for this book on page 342. Is there enough tea for me to have another cup? He asked him as nonchalantly as he could manage. If there isn't, I'm sure I could have cook brew another pot. Oh, I'm, no, I'm sure that won't be necessary, he explained, probably a little too loudly. I'll just take whatever is left. All right, we're still talking about tea. This last package is kind of small, so maybe we've got tea to go with our teacup. So we've got this for page 342. So you've got stash tea, breakfast in Paris. This is a blend of black teas, lavender, bergamot oil, and lavender extract. Ginger peach, which is green tea with ginger root, natural peach flavor, and matcha. And golden turmeric chai, 
which is cinnamon, ginger root, turmeric, orange peel, cardamom seed, and clove. So those will be fun to try. I love tea. I probably won't actually use the teacup, but I'll definitely use the tea. The teacup looks like more of a display piece for me personally. All right, so that is everything for the Viscount and me. Those were cute gifts. I'm definitely loving the teacup the most of those things. Um, but I like the tea also. So we've got, again, either really nice display items or genuinely useful items. The key is a bit of an anomaly, but it's cute. I mean, I could see putting it up somewhere. All right, last book. This is an offer from a gentleman. And so we've got three gifts to go with this one. And the first one goes for page 152. It just brings me so much joy that, the, that like there's little post-it notes in there. I don't know why. That's so goofy, but I just think it's cool. Okay. Good God, Sophie gasped, thunderstruck. It was her. She brought the sketch closer to her face. He'd gotten the details of her dress, that wonderful magical silver concoction that had been hers for only a single evening, perfectly. He even remembered her long elbow-length gloves and the exact manner in which her hair had been styled. Her face was a little less recognizable, but one would have to make allowances for that given he'd never actually seen it in its entirety. Well, not until now. Ah, oh, so good. This one was, like, I, this book was such a Cinderella story. I mean, in, like, in almost the most literal sense possible. If you're about the first, I don't know, quarter of it or so maybe not quite that much but I think it's cute how it plays out in the end so uh, let's see what we're talking about a sketch of her so maybe this is a picture this actually came outside of the main box because it didn't fit I guess Ooh, okay we have like a whole like journal thing here so this looks real nice okay so we got like a faux leather journal it's got a nice little um, magnetic closure. That's really cute. So let's see what's on the inside. Oh, well, did I, have, I had it upside down for one thing. <laughs> but, oh, cute. Okay. So we've got a picture of the family um, playing croquet, which was one of the scenes from this story. Oh, there's like a cup over it. There you go. Now you can see that a little better. So there's a sketch of the family playing croquet that I guess Benedict would have done. And then there is the picture of Sophie in her dress with her hair up and her mask on and everything in a sketch. That's so cool. And then let's see, is there anything else? Okay, so the rest of it behind here is just is blank pages. So you could actually, you know, do your own sketches. I could see take either leave I mean I could you could leave those in there for sure, but I could see taking them out and like putting them in a frame or something if you wanted to display them as well. But I love the design of this. That's real cute. So, yeah, I could... This is useful. <laughs> I, this is, I'm going to have to look at the size, but I bet this is the same size hole punch as a planner that a planner punch that I already have. So I could see using this as a planner because it is very nice and sturdy. Like, it's, it's pretty solid. It's not squishy. And it's really nice. It looks nice. So I'm a big fan of that. That's really cute and useful. And quality too. So next we have page 258. So there's page 258 is the next one. Your book is upside down, he pointed out. Sophie, Sophie gasped and looked down. It is not. He smiled slyly, but you still had to look to be sure, didn't you? She stood up and announced, I'm going inside. <laughs> so I guess this is going to be something book related in this next one. So yeah, this is um, the last, no, this is the second book for that, second item for that book. This feels like a book. <gasps> Wait. Wait. <gasps> oh! Okay, hold up, hold up. We're, we're getting excited here. It's the next book! Yes! Ah! Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. This is Colin and Penelope's book. I love this one! Okay, so let's just take a look at this one. So this one's um, a deep pink with a light pink accents and stuff on it. And we've got uh, Penelope writing on the front with Colin. And it says, he made her more confident, more daring. He made her more herself, at least the herself she wished she could be. I love Colin and Penelope. That's so cute. Oh, well, that's exciting. That was a bonus because you were only supposed to get three books in this one. That's what the like description says. You get the first three, but they put the bonus fourth one in. So... That leaves there are four books left, so I assume that we'll do four books in the next box, and then we'll be finished with them. Oh, that's so exciting. I feel very, like, I feel like I got, like, a super bonus right there. I'm excited about that. So there are no gifts with this one because this one was the gift itself. 
just to clarify, but that's really cool. All right, we have one more gift left, one more little treat, and it is on page 344. That's easy for you to say, she snapped, tugging frantically at the blindfold. You who have everything. I had to... Oh! With one wrenching movement, she somehow managed to yank down the scarves until they hung loosely around her neck. Okay, so scarf, probably? Yeah, there we go. So that was the last one for this. Okay, we've got a scarf. Just all rolled up and tied with a little twine. Okay, this is pretty. It's a nice pink floral. And it's got some little tassels on the end. It's a nice lightweight too, so you can wear this either summer or winter to, you know, embellish your outfit and whatnot. Very cute. Okay. That was the last item of the bookish items, or the book-related items, I should say. There's one more thing in the box, and I need to take a look at it. So this is the Bridgerton Glove Story Challenge. Okay, I didn't actually read that whole thing earlier, so I guess this, you wear the gloves and you t use the book, one of the books that you have, and then try to take a picture like this. So these are the gloves, which is cute because it's another little, you know, piece that you can play with. See, I use everyday items around your home to recreate the photo on the front of this card. Get creative. Think toilet paper, food, old clothes, etc. Be sure to include one of the Bridgerton books along with your pair of gloves and tag us with the hashtag Bridgerton Glove Story Challenge when you share it on Instagram or Facebook. The most creative photo will re receive a $100 once upon, $100 once upon a club book club gift card. Cool. Love that. All right, so let's take a look at the pretty gloves. Got some like light gray lacy gloves with some embellishment up here and a little pearl. That's very cute. I wonder if this actually fits my hand. All right, let's try this left one on. My hands are very small, but kind of chunky. <laughs> Oops, I'm about to stick my fingers in the wrong holes. There we go. Very fancy. Yes, they do fit. Only just, but um, they definitely have plenty of length, I will say that. Yeah, these are really cute. So, I can, you know, hold my fancy book with my fancy gloves, my fancy scarf, and my fancy ring. I'm very fancy. Okay, so that was the box. That was everything in it. Um, I think that was pretty incredible. That's a lot of really great stuff. Um... Again, I think this would be a really cool experience to gift to somebody. If they're still available, I'll make sure and link them down below. And if they're not, definitely be on the lookout for the second set. And I would be surprised if they don't at least sell the books at some point, maybe, um, so that you would have a complete set if you missed this first round. So I would go follow Once Upon a Book Club on Instagram and Facebook and stuff and just see whenever they post more info about the next one. But with that, I think that's our haul, um, our unboxing. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to see more bookish content from me as well as all the other great stuff we do on this channel. Um, don't forget to leave a comment below. Have you read these books? Are you interested in these books? Would you want this box? Um, did you get this box? What did you think of it? Um, just let me know down in the comments and be sure to um, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you want to know what we're up to between videos. We can also chat there if you're wondering about something or just want to say hello. We also have merch, so that link is down below as well if you want to go and support the channel, buy a t-shirt, a mug, a sweatshirt, whatever you want. We've got some pretty cool stuff there. And with that, I hope you have a great, safe rest of the day. Bye, everybody!